This is going to be a caliber change video on the Dillon XL650. Uh, I'm going to change it from 223 to 357 Magnum. And I've actually never run uh, 357 Magnum on it before. And I'm going to be using some of my old dies on a new Dillon tool head with a uh, new powder feeder. And uh, first thing I want to do is uh, totally finish up the uh, 223, uh, get all the primers out of there, and uh, then we'll start uh, doing the caliber change. So before I do a caliber change, I always want to finish off my primers. And uh, that's when I can consider a little finish. Because uh, primers don't have any marks on them, and uh, you just want to be done with them so you have an empty machine and ready to reload another caliber. So we'll put the 357 on it now. And this is a good one for you uh, 223 reloaders. I can kind of feel that it doesn't want to take this primer. Even though I know that the case has been swaged, I can pull it off at that station. Uh, obviously, it's a Lake City, and this is the deburring tool for you know trimming the cases. You grind it through that primer pocket, then uh, most of the time it'll take the uh, it'll take the primer just fine. Yep, Put right in there. So that's just a quick little uh, tip for people who follow me. Even though this is a 357 video. So before I do a caliber change on my press, um, I always run out the primers. Well, of course, I was using the exact same primer, and uh, that way I got a fresh, empty machine ready to go. So now that I know that the uh, primer system is completely empty, I can go ahead and load in the Magnum primers. So we'll go ahead and get this caliber change done. So now the machine is uh, totally empty of the primers and everything. I want to take off everything that is not bolted down. Everything that can be done with your fingers. I just took out the uh, locator buttons. Now I'm going to take out the uh, extractor for the, uh, for the cases. And I'm going to take off the failsafe rod. Pull these two pins. Take off the entire tool head. Pull off the uh, tube for the uh, case feeder. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and clean that while I'm at it. I'm going to take this adapter and I'm going to take this little green guy right here and I'm going to change this and I'm also just going to do some stuff to the other side of the press. Can't see it reaching around the camera. So over here, I'm going to take out that little green guy, get my fingers on it, that's part of the case feeder, and then we've got to take this guy out, this is uh, specific to the uh, 223, uh, it works for the 9mm and the 223, but not the 308, or um, not the uh, 357, I'm sorry, and then also, Got to change this block while I'm thinking about it. That uh, that little short shallow ramp is for uh, rifle, and this long gradual ramp is for uh, pistol. And um, it's also got a little adjustment, so I'll do that later, and I'll do that on the next video. And then also, this will be on the next video. I'm going to take this block out, which is what cycles the uh, primers. And uh, that'll be in the next video on why I do that. And that's for setup. And when doing a caliber change, it's always a good time to do some house cleaning. And uh, you can see all that tape residue. I'm going to leave that because I'm going to add a new piece of tape here. And uh, that's just one of those little Dylan tricks. And then also on the uh, little primer catch thing here, I'll retape that as well. And I'll show you that nifty little trick too. So I don't know if you can see that piece of tape there. That's uh actually a pretty important one. Uh, for some reason if you just add this little piece it almost works like a little rubber gasket and uh, just keeps the machine from spitting so much crap all over your floor and your bench. So the new piece of tape um, it doesn't matter that you've got your sticky stuff showing there you know because powder and primers and things like that are going to stick to it and uh, when it goes in it's going to be just like a drawer and it's just going to kind of conform to uh, what causes the problems in there. 
and then I also take this tape, put it across the front and down these sides, and that keeps that tray from sliding out. Also catches some more of that debris. And for where those primers slide down the ramp, just tear yourself off a piece of tape about two inches long and fold it over to where you have about an eighth inch of the sticky part left and then you just stick it on there and what this does um, every time you on this machine if you miss a shell for a case for any reason that doesn't get primed it's going to spit a new primer down into this ramp and a lot of times they just roll right onto the floor which kind of sucks and that's just a little trick I discovered over time and now we're going to get ready to change the uh, shell plate itself and uh, this is just something I came up with this is an old half inch socket with extension just to make it the right height to jack this handle up to just the right height to uh, keep that thing raised so I can get to that set screw and uh, change that plate I'm going to move the camera so you can see what I'm doing on this one one thing I forgot to grab is the uh, ramp here which slides a case onto the shell plate and um, the reason I raised the platform is there's a set screw right here for that bolt there and even though it's a big Allen there you should never need any tools for this part this should always be just like a hand tight kind of thing and you lift it off of there and this is a really good time to come in here and really clean up um, I don't like to have any lubricants under here to speak of. I mean, some get under there because I do an occasional spraying with some REM oil, things like that. But uh, the reason to not really have any lubricant is so the powder doesn't stick to it. I'm not going to be changing the uh, primer thing here. Um, I think one of the best ways to go there, <clears throat> if you're going to get one of these machines, is to go ahead and get the whole set up for a large primer thing. Then all you're going to do is take out two Allen screws, you lift the whole rig off, and then you're going to set a new one on there. It's just that simple. And uh, change out the, uh, the, the feeder on the bottom. Um, so let me uh, get the uh, shell plate for the 357. So this might be just getting ahead of myself just a little bit. Um, this is going to kind of go into the next video. And uh, that's going to be on the uh, doing the 357. But uh, I just put a little gun butter on there. Uh, let's set that plate on and this just kind of just showing you the whole caliber change but I'm not going to go into the uh, adjusting it so much and all that knock that thing out of there so usually with this you go finger tight and then you back it off just a teeny bit and then you want to be able to index it you know just with a little bit of drag So we're going to put our locator buttons in, and these actually are specific to each caliber. And then we're also going to put our extractor in. Let me see if I can reach over and see that without... I can't see it. There it is. And that part's done. So this part of the uh, case feeder for the TP3. Then I got the new one up in here. It's got a hole that goes all the way through it. And you just want to find a way to get your wrench to line up. And go ahead and tighten it up. And then remember that little green guy I took out? Now I got the little red guy in. So there's a little organization in here. You know, you gotta, if you have enough caliber changes, you gotta keep them uh, separated up. Now I haven't cleaned that tube yet, so I'm not gonna put that in there. So now I'm gonna pull that socket out from underneath check the operation of the uh, shell plate and then uh, put a tool head on it. Now these are RCBS dies. There's only going to be two of them on this. I may not keep it this way because I'm not really crazy about this seating crimp die being all in one. But we'll see how it works. If it doesn't work all that great, this is off my single stage press. And, uh, but if it works good, I'll keep it. But I have a feeling I might be buying a three die set for that. Now as far as the uh, case feeder itself, I'm taking out this one, which is a small rifle. I make four of them on these Dillon machines. And I'm going to put in the uh, small pistol.
okay on this part on this part I've got my dies are totally backed off everything and all I'm going to do is just check the operation of this make sure it feeds them properly um, and also there's no prime thing going on because I took this off so it's not moving so that's all I'm doing is just checking the uh, operation there and then uh, we'll do all the die stuff when we uh, do the 357 video. So it's really important to keep all your pieces and parts together for each caliber change. And these little Dillon uh, holders are very handy for that. And um, the rest of it will be in my uh, 357 video where I'm going to go ahead and set up the dies, powder measure, because it's going to bell cases. Unlike rifles, they don't bell cases. They just, uh, you set it so it cycles it the whole way. And I'll explain why I took that block out. And uh, hopefully that stuff will be clear. And, uh, you guys have a good one. We'll see you on the next video. 357 Magnum. Woohoo!